Hello, F Sharp, and welcome back to our intro series on the F Sharp language. Today, what we're going to talk about is a new collection, which is the map collection. A map in, dot, in F Sharp is a key value collection, and it's actually stored as a tree data structure in the back end. Now, let me show you how we would define a map. So let me say, hey, let A equal to, I'm going to say map. And then I'm going to give it a list of key value pairs. So in this case, I'm going to use integers as the key and then strings as the values. So two, B and three, C. So I can go ahead and create this. And I've now created an instance of the map collection of F sharp. The first generic parameter is the key and the second generic parameter is the value that it's holding. And like I said, the map is, it's a very interesting data structure, actually. It is immutable. It's a key value collection that uses comparison to sort the keys. And it's stored as a modified AVL tree, which means lookups are log in time. And keys are unique in the collection. So it, it for those of you coming from like C sharp, you may like, ah, kind of sounds like a dictionary and like, okay, yes, it is. It is a key value collection. You put in a key, you get a value back, but the underlying storage mechanism is a tree data structure. And that's necessary to give it fast performance to maintain immutability. So if I could also define it, so let B equal to map. This is actually what I would actually do more commonly is I would separate this out into rows. So three C. So in this case, I'm actually giving these maps. It takes a sequence of tuples. The first element is the key and the second element is going to be the value associated with it. And it's going to give you a map back. So in this case, I'm giving it a list of tuples, in both cases. And it's taking that and turning it into a map data structure under the covers. And so if I want to look up something from it, I can kind of treat it like a dictionary and say like, Hey, well, I need to make sure I actually, Oh, what are you doing, VS Code? What are you doing? You're losing your mind. So if I say, hey, give me the value for the key of one, it's going to give me the string A back. And if I say, give me value for two, give me B back. And if I try to access an element that is not there, I'm going to get a key not found exception. So that it behaves essentially like a dictionary. If the value is not in there, you're going to get an exception. And we're going to see elegant ways of dealing with that in the future. Now, like I said, this is an immutable data structure and it has structural equality, like the set in F sharp, like list, like array, like all the F sharp default collections have this structural equality default. And so what you'll notice here is that the, the keys and values in A, my A map, are the same as my B map. And so if I say, hey, is A equal to B? Now note, these are different references. I've created two different instances of the map collection. They are two different references. They are two different places of memory. But when I say, hey, are these equal? It's going to say true. They are equal. And again, that kind of comes back to F sharp maintaining the idea of structural equality. If these things are structurally equivalent, then they are the same. Even if they are different references. So like I've mentioned, this is an immutable data structure. So if I want to set an element, and so this might be something that you would uh, expect to be able to do if you thought of it like a dictionary in C sharp, it's like, no, it says, hey, you cannot do that. You're not allowed to just set values like you would with an, a, a mutable collection like the .NET dictionary. So that's not allowed. But if you have a and you say like, hey, I really want to add something to A. What you can do is say like, okay, well, A, I'm going to say chicken. And I say like, hey, take the A map. I want you to add a key value pair to it. And I'm saying the key in this case is a one and the value is chicken. Now, notice that that key is going to collide with a key that is already in the A map. So when I do this, what happens 
is I get a new map back. So C is a new map, and the values in C are a key of one and a value of chicken, a key of two and a value of B, and a key of three and a value of C. And if we look at, okay, well, what is an A? A still exists. A has not been mutated. It is the same. So maps are really valuable when you want to maintain this idea of a key value pairing collection, but you want to not have those key values destroyed. Like you need to maintain this kind of history. I have found them very helpful for things like Monte Carlo tree search. Uh, I'm, and I'm sure there's many other algorithms where it's really useful, but most of the time if I'm reaching for a key value collection, I'm in a scenario where I'm very read heavy. And so I will use a read only dictionary because the lookup for a dictionary is much faster than for a map data structure. And that's just because a map is stored as a tree data structure, a dictionary or is going to be a hash table. So you're going to have O1 lookup time. It's much faster if I'm in this read heavy environment. But if I'm in this place where I want to be evolving that key value collection, but maintaining kind of like a history or I want to keep the previous instances around the map collection is really, really nice to have. And it would be very painful to have to recreate on my own. So I really like having it available. At the same time, we can also do things like, Hey, D equals uh, a remove. And I say that, Hey, I want you to remove something and I'm going to get a new collection back. That's fantastic. One of the things I mentioned though, is like, Hey, if I want to look up a value in this collection that is not there. So like we don't have a value 10, we're going to get this exception. Okay, like, hey, key not found exception. So you might say like, okay, well, that's fine. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to say like, Hey, well, if a contains key one, then I'm going to do something. Then I'm actually going to get the value out. And then I'm going to say, Hey, um, let B equal to a, uh, get that value of one. And I'm going to go ahead and print it out just for fun. And I say, Hey, the value and I say it's V and say, okay, well, if it contains, if it contains a, the key. So I have to check first each time. This is kind of annoying to have to check every time before you do a lookup. If you're coming from C sharp, you may be used to having a method, which is the try get value method. And what the try get value method does with a map is the same thing as how it behaves with a .NET dictionary. And what it's doing is it's returning a Boolean and the value and the Boolean, you have to check the Boolean like, Hey, did I actually get the value back or not? And the way you would actually do that with in F sharp, it's a little different match with and I'm going to go ahead and look up the value of one. And what you see is like, okay, try get values this method and it takes a, a key, which in our case is an integer and it returns a string by ref and a bool. Huh? I'll just show you how to use it. So we're going to say like, Hey, in the true case, I'm going to have this value and I'm going to go ahead and copy this print logic here put it there and then false. In this case, I'm going to use the underscore to indicate I do not use whatever would be here. I'm going to print function, no value. So this is how you would do the C sharp equivalent of working with the try get value method. And if I go ahead and run this, there is a value of one. So it should put out value a, okay, great. That works. If I do two here, uh, no, I'm going to use 10 because it's not in the collection. And if I go ahead and run this, I'm going to get no value because like, Hey, it wasn't in there. This, like I said, this is how you would do this in C sharp. This is the F sharp. This is the F sharp equivalent of what you would do in C sharp. Now, yesterday we introduced the idea of the option type and the option type is how we encode the absence of value. So wouldn't it be nice if there was a method that allowed us to try to get a value, but it encoded the fact like it is possible that the thing you're trying to look up does not exist in this collection. 
And there absolutely is. And it is the A try find. So anytime you come across a try find method in the F sharp libraries, well, anytime you see a method, it starts with try. The assumption that you should have is going to return an option of some kind. And so if you go to any of the modules for working with the collections and you say, hey, try, uh, try get value, try contains, try anything, that try word is an indication to you like, hey, this is going to be returning an option type. There's nothing in the language that forces that. That is just the design principle that's pretty consistent across every F sharp code base I have ever worked with. So don't just assume that, like check that is actually returning an option type, but most likely it is if the person is writing code that is consistent with how most people are writing F sharp these days. So try find is gonna take a, the, the, a key, which in our case is the integer type, and it's gonna return an option of whatever value it's going to try to look up. So now the way we would work with that, I'm gonna say, hey, try to find one. And now we're gonna say, hey, hey, some value. Again, I'm just gonna copy this. Do, 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 go ahead and print that, or none. Print function, no value. So this would be a much, this would be the F sharpie way of doing this, where it's saying, hey, I ran this and I said like, hey, value A. And that is the value that is associated with the key of one in the A map. So this is how I would suggest that you do it in F sharp. Yes, this C sharp style that works, but this would be the way I would expect you to do it in normal F sharp code. So again, using the try find, and we have encoded the reality that collections, key value collections may or may not be able to return a value to you. And we are going to force you as the developer to deal with that scenario instead of just raising key not found exceptions. So that's the, perf I would, I would suggest you use this approach to looking at values. Um, unless you're very certain that the value is in there and then it's like, okay, well, A, one, just look up. Because now you need to be much more thoughtful about what keys you're using to look up values in your collection. So again, I would suggest you use something more like this. And don't forget with the option module, we don't have to necessarily do this match with stuff. We could also say, hey, you know what? A, try find one, and I'm going to pipe that into an option dot map. And I'm going to say like, hey, print function and say, hey, this is the value and whatever that value is. And so this would be kind of an even more F sharpy way of dealing with that situation. And this is kind of what I would expect when I was looking at someone else's code to them have this kind of style here. Now, if you watch the other video that came out today, we talked about active patterns. And so sometimes we want to loop through the elements that are in a map, which is a key value collection. And so like, hey, for X and A do, and what is X? X is a key value pair. And so we could do this, but if we wanna get the key and the value in it, we have to do, you know, dot key or dot value. Again, I find that a little clunky. So I like to use the active pattern key value active pattern and say, hey, key value to unpack them. So print function key, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in here. Key and I'm gonna go ahead and have value here, value. So now we're going to, okay, value. So now I can just iterate through all the key value pairs that are in there and do something with them. So this is the kind of approach I would use if I just wanted to kind of loop through the key value pairs in a map and do something with them. Now, there's also the map module, which gives us fantastic functions for also working with maps. And I highly recommend you check them out. And so what happens is like, hey, you know what? I really want to go through all the key value pairs that are in my map, and I want to double the values that are in there. And so what you can do is map.map. .map. 
And you're going to give it a function that you're going to apply to each key and value inside of here. And again, the map mod, so you have the, you have, and this is where like the word map is really overloaded. You have the map collection, you have the, which is what A is. And A, A is an instance of the map collection. You have the map module, which is the module which holds the functions for working with the map collection. And you have the map function itself, which is taking something and transforming it into something else. And so this is why that word map is way too overloaded, quite honestly. But the map function for the map module takes a function which takes a key and a value and gives you a new value. And so what this is going to do is say like, hey, key value. And what this is going to do is it's going to iterate through each of the keys and values and it's going to perform some function. It's going to give you a new value and a new map back. And let's say, hey, we want value times two. Uh, that's Shibaba. Why are you angry? It's, oh, because value is a string. Okay. Uh, blah, blah. Well, that's annoying. Um, let's just say, let's just go, hey, value plus more string. I know that's kind of absurd, but this is going to say like, hey, let new map equal. And so again, remember that the map type in S sharp is immutable. So what this is going to do is it's going to loop through all the keys and values in the a map and give us a new map back. So now we have new map and new map has the same keys, but each of the values have been changed. Well, not changed. We, we have a new map now. A still exists. And I'm going to go ahead and prove it by saying like, Hey, give me the values for A. A still exists, but we went through the key values of A applied a function to those keys and values to create new values. And that created a new map for us. So this is the more common way of saying like, Hey, I have this map and I want to do some kind of transformation on it and get a new map. This would be how we would typically do that. And there's a lot more functions inside the map module. We're not going to cover them right now. In the future, I'll have a video where we go into all the different functions inside of the collection modules in greater detail, but this is just like a quick introduction. So if you're needing a key value collection and you're needing it to be immutable and you want to have structural equality, the F sharp map is a great choice. Well, until next time, thank you very much for spending some time with me. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you very much.